Hello, this is Gary Pinnell with Bible-Christian.org. I'd like to welcome to our Bible study today. We'll be in Acts chapter 22. And then also, if you're reading through the Bible with us, you would need to look at the Old Testament passage, which would be in Exodus the 26, uh, 27, and Psalm 42. And as we said in Acts chapter 22, now, Paul has been taken, he's been arrested by the Romans, but the Jews in Jerusalem have uh, gone and got the Romans and really caused a riot, and, they, and then the Romans came, because they'll try to stop any riots that happen in the city and so on, especially Jerusalem, because it's been such a tumultuous uh people and through the years and so on as far as the romans were concerned but then uh paul when he's being arrested and taken to uh to a barracks where they'll want to uh lash him to get the truth out of him to find out why people are upset with him but while he did was able to talk to the roman centurion there and the one in charge at least and ask him uh, kindly if he could speak to the people well i suppose this uh roman leader thought boy maybe i'll find out here why are they all so upset and we can get everybody quieted down again so he let paul speak to the people and that's where we're starting today Brethren and fathers, so it's not like it's in a building or something. It's outside in the street, and many people are gathered there, but it's a good opportunity to witness for Paul. Brethren and fathers, hear my defense before you now. And when they heard that he spoke to them in Hebrew language, they kept all the more silent. You see, they had thought, oh, this is just some rabble-rouser, because it's been a long time since Paul was uh, very close to being on the Sanhedrin himself as a young man. And then when they had uh, stoned Stephen, but then he left there and he was saved, I remember, on the Damascus Road. So now he wants to share with the religious leaders and also the people that are gathered here what has happened to him? And uh, they're listening because he's speaking in very good Hebrew. I am indeed a Jew born in Tarsus, uh, Sicily, Silica, <laughs> but brought up in the city at the feet of Gamaliel. Now, Gamaliel was a tremendous Bible teacher from the Old Testament times, and he was a Pharisee. And he stopped him on, on uh, at least one occasion from actually probably killing the, the apostles. But if God would allow that. So he was speaking and uh, uh, saying that he was brought up under Gamaliel. And they would know that fellow. And so taught according to the strictness of our father's law. And uh, was zealous toward God as you all are today. I persecuted this way to the death, binding and delivering into prison both men and women. So you see that um, he was very honest with them, very open with the people and telling them, look, I used to be in your same boots. I was uh, zealous and trying to kill these Christians. And, and uh, so... That's the way I was, uh, but then they're listening because he has something to say and they can identify with this. And so he keeps going. And he says, mm. as also the high priest bears me witness. So the high priest would know uh, Saul still, even though quite a few years have passed. And all the counsel of the elders from whom I also received letters to the brethren and went to Damascus to bring in chains even those who were there to, uh, to Jerusalem to be punished. Now, it's kind of hard for them to get away uh, with trying to say something about him because he was right there. He was one of them, but he was saved out of the Pharisees. 
he received Jesus on the Damascus Road. And so now he's sharing with them. Well, you can imagine everyone's really listening. What happened to you? Because you were just like us. And now, look, you've changed. And and so um, now it happened as I journeyed and came near Damascus at about noon. Suddenly a great light from heaven shone around me. And I'll tell you, when Jesus appears with his light, they say, it's like the light of the noonday sun. And without your normal eyes, you would go blind, just like Paul did. And I fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to me, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? He said, oh, wait, wait, wait. Is Jesus making a mistake? Because doesn't he know that uh, Saul is not persecuting Jesus? How could he? Because Jesus has died and risen and gone to heaven. You know what? Every time Jesus sees one of his little ones, one of his believers going through prison, going through mockings, going through scourgings, which is whippings, going through all these things, he is right there with them by his Holy Spirit. He feels it all in the sense that he is next to them, with them, in them, using them during this time. And I remember when, uh, in Fox's Book of Martyrs, when we talked about this some time ago, when Peter um, would be crucified, he was crucified because they couldn't crucify Roman citizens, but if you weren't a Roman citizen, they could crucify you. But he asked to be put upside down. And um, even more suffering he would go through. But remember when he was uh, trying to flee uh, the city, Rome, Italy, he was going out the gates. The Lord came to him. I don't know if it's in the form of, a, uh, you know, a vision or whatever, but he came to Peter and Peter recognized him as Peter was fleeing from the city. And he asked Peter, yeah, Jesus, or Peter asked him, where are you going? And he says, I'm going into the city to be crucified again. And I believe he's saying that he goes through all the pains and suffering that we go through. That's the kind of savior, savior that we have. And that's what he's talking about here when uh, he's talking to... Paul and explaining, uh, Paul is giving his testimony how he's saved on the road to Damascus. So when people are persecuting you or I, they're persecuting Jesus. So I answered, why are you, who are you, Lord? And he said to me, I am Jesus of Nazareth, whom you are persecuting. And those who were with me indeed saw the light and were afraid. But they did not hear the voice of him who spoke to me. Now, they no doubt heard uh, the sound of the voice, but they didn't understand what was being said to him. But they did know something unusual was happening. And so um, Paul's explaining all this to them. And uh, then verse 10, so I said, what shall I do, Lord? And the Lord said to me, arise and go into Damascus, and there you will be told all things which are appointed for you to do. And since I could not see for the glory of that light, being led by the hand of those who were with me, I came into Damascus. Then a certain Ananias, Ananias was a pretty common name then, a devout man according to the law, having a good testimony with all the Jews who dwelt there in Damascus, came to me and he stood and he said to me, Brother Saul, receive your sight. And at that same hour, I looked up at him. So his sight was healed. Then he said, the God of our fathers has chosen you that you should 
should know his will and see the just one. That's Jesus, just one, the perfect one, righteous one. And hear the voice of his mouth, for you will be my, be his witness to all men of what you have seen and heard. And now, why are you waiting? Arise and be baptized and wash away your sins, calling on the name of the Lord Jesus, of the Lord. So, he was sharing with them how he had been born again, how he came to trust in Jesus as his Lord and Savior. Now, we are saved not by the baptism, but by uh, belief in the Lord Jesus Christ. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. But we are commanded to be baptized after we are saved. And I know there's some people that say, oh, I was baptized as a baby or what have you. And they have excuses why they don't want to get baptized. Well, you know what? I would personally doubt whether or not they've truly been born again. That's just my opinion. Because they need to follow through on the commands of the Lord. It's a testimony to everybody around you that your sins have been forgiven. It's a testimony. It's a picture of you. Like in Romans chapter 6, it talks about you died with Christ and then you came alive with him when you go down in the water and come up out of the water. And we believe in immersion as much as possible. And so this is what uh, Paul is telling them. And I'm hoping and uh, that they're listening. And I wonder if the Roman uh, leader is listening too, hopefully. All right. So he said, uh, Lord, they know that in every synagogue I imprisoned and beat those who believe on you. And when the blood of your martyr Stephen was shed, I also was standing by consenting to his death and guarding the clothes of those who were killing him. Then he said to me, Depart, for I will send you far away from here to the Gentiles. Oh, boy. See, this is one thing that Jews were very far away from the Lord as a nation. Right now, they're in captivity again, before they've been in captivity in Babylon, and now they're in captivity to Rome. And just because they would not be willing, to, they were not willing to receive their Messiah, Jesus. And Jesus told them, this is what's going to happen uh, to you. Don't be sorrowful for me, but realize that what's going to happen in the future to you. And he talked about uh, in 70 AD when Titus would come and uh, <laughs> crucify many of them to... Uh, they were under uh, starvation. Uh, they were just uh, really mistreated. And many of the, those, uh, over two million, I'm told, in history, uh, people were killed in Jerusalem alone uh, in 70 AD. So uh, he wants the gospel to go out to these people before it's too late to them, uh, too late for them. And I've shared with you probably before, but we're studying... Uh, we studied the First World War in um, Contemporary World Problems, CWP, but then we also now are in the Second World War, and we're looking at Pearl Harbor. There's something a lot of people don't know about Pearl Harbor, and that is that there was 35,000 to 50,000 New Testaments given out to the Army, to the Navy, to the Air Force, uh, there before Pearl Harbor happened. Several days before that, the Gideons were able to get those New Testaments out. Praise God. Many, many people, and they, even though they were floating in the water after their ships had been bombed and they were in the submarines and dead in there and so on, there on the bunk or close by or in their pocket was a New Testament. In the back of the New Testament, it, says if you want to pray and receive jesus as your savior gives them the way of salvation gives the verses of scripture multitudes of guys received the lord before that and you know that encouraged my heart when i realized 
God is concerned about each and every individual in this world. And even though we may not always see how God is speaking to them, he is. And he gave those guys a chance to receive him. And many, many did before they were bombed by the Japanese in Pearl Harbor, December 7th, 1941, I believe it was. So anyway, let's get back here. God cares about what's happening in the world. Every single person he's concerned about. He wants to give them an opportunity to receive him. <laughs> and so Paul says, I was there when they were stoning Stephen. I was holding their garments. And then he said to me, Depart, for I will send you far from here to the Gentiles. Now, the Jews, instead of being a light to the Gentiles like they were supposed to be, they hated the Gentiles. They didn't want to be near them. They didn't want to eat with them. They didn't want to try to win them. To In those days before uh, the church age started, they were supposed to become, teach the people to become proselytes of the Christian and Jewish faith. But do you think they liked doing that? No. Uh, they would make the, the Gentiles, of course, stand outside of their synagogues and so on. But here, Paul says, Jesus, sending me to the Gentiles. They didn't like to hear that. And they listened to him up until this word, and then, the word Gentile, and then they raised their voices and said, Away with such a fellow from the earth, for he is not fit to live. Instead of realizing the gospel had come to, and belief had come to Gentiles, they rejected it and refused it. Oh, remember when they stood before Pilate, and they said, when he said, isn't he your king? And we have no king except for Caesar. And then uh, they said, let his blood be on us and on our children. Until they, and I love the Jewish people. I know you do too. But until they turn to Christ as their Lord and Savior, they're going to have terrible tribulation. It's going to be even worse than what happened in Nazi Germany and the Holocaust and so on. And that happens in the midpoint of the tribulation uh, because there uh, they realize that uh, Jesus is truly the Messiah. This guy that they thought was the Messiah in the midpoint of the tribulation is blaspheming the God of heaven. So they know that can't be, right? And so they leave and they go and they believe in Jesus as their Messiah, Messiah and Savior and Lord and King. That's going to be such a wonderful day. But for three and a half years, they're going to be persecuted. They will, if they don't take the mark of the beast, their head is going to be cut off and uh, they won't be able to buy or sell during that time. And so many are beheaded and uh, go to... Uh, you see that in the book of Revelation, what happens to him and so on. But we got to keep going here. So that's what God is waiting for them to accept him of their own free will. Then, verse 23. As they cried out and tore off their clothes and threw dust into the air, the commander ordered him to be brought into the barracks and said that he should be examined under scourging. And as this, they whip you until you, you're hurting so bad you have to say something, all right? You're going to say anything they want you to say. So that he might know why they shouted uh, so against him. As he couldn't uh, fathom, this leader couldn't fathom the hatred that the Jews had for uh, Jesus. And as they bound him with thongs, just as it had been said uh, about Paul and the prophecy, Agabus and uh, the others are talking about, Paul said to the centurion who stood by, is it lawful for you to scourge a man who is a Roman? <laughs> they didn't even think about that, did they? Uh, they didn't even think about it. When the centurion heard that he, that, uh, he went and told the commander, saying, Take care what you do, for this man is a Roman. Then the commander came 
and said to him, Tell me, are you a Roman? He said, Yes. Paul did. The commander answered, With a large sum of I obtained this citizenship. And Paul said, But I was born a gent a citizen. And uh, then immediately those who were about to examine him withdrew from him. You could get in serious trouble if you whipped a, a, a Roman citizen without uh, uh, having a trial for him. And the commander was also afraid after he found out that he was a Roman. And because he had bound him, he's thinking, oh no, I'm in serious trouble here. Then the next day, because he wanted to know for certain why he was accused by the Jews, he released him from his bonds, took those off his hands, and commanded the chief priests and all their council to appear. Good morning, Esther. It's good to see that you're on. We're in verse 30 of chapter 22 of Acts. And all their council to appear and brought Paul down and set him before them. Okay. So you remember any time they leave Jerusalem and go anywhere, they're going down. Okay, because Jerusalem's on a high hill. I've been there and I know. And of course, that's what they're talking about. But so they took him down to a place where the Sanhedrin was meeting. Remember, that's the 70 religious leaders that had Jesus crucified. But at that time, uh, they no doubt had to get two other ones because Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus had become believers in Jesus as their Messiah and helped take him off the cross and placed him in the tomb. And then he had come back to life and then they had found out about that and they trusted him as their Lord and Savior. So they would have had to hired or hired probably the type of thing it is uh, to get two other people on the council. So there's 70 all together. So there would be the 70 there and other people at this meeting. Isn't it interesting? Almost the same ones that had Jesus crucified. They're not listening. They're not listening to what God is saying to their hearts and to how Jesus was raised from the dead and appeared to him over 40 days, more than 500 at one time, Paul said, had seen the Lord. And then um, they were in the upper room for uh, Jesus floated back up to heaven while they're watching. Then the others were in the upper room for 10 days and the Holy Spirit was poured out on them. You see, do you think they're listening? No, there's a lot of people in this world that aren't listening to the gospel. Thank God there are some that do. But the, the heavens declare the, and the firmament declare God's glory. And then also, if you think about it, there is everything that our body is. Look at the plants and animals. They cannot even make one insect science can. They may know how they live, how they work, a lot about insects. They know a lot about animals. They know a lot about people and how our body works and so on. But they can't make one because it takes life and life comes from God. And uh, in us, the life is in the blood, the Bible says. That's why we're not supposed to eat like blood pudding or drink blood like the satanic worshipers do and so on. And they're mocking what God has created. But see, uh, people will say, like Madonna says, that she's a material woman. She just has been deceived by Satan so much that, well, you're just physical. There is no spiritual and so on. However, when they get to that spot, then a lot of times they start worshiping Satan. Isn't that interesting? Uh, that you can see that uh, I've done some studying on Hitler. And uh, he got into Satan worship and demon worship. In fact, some of those books uh, were some that he really liked about from Darwin and uh, other atheists, and that is what directed his life. Uh, he loved those, and he said that he kept some of those under his pillow, and that's what he studied, you see, and that's where Darwin had gone uh, wrong. He started 
uh, listening to the Satan worshipers in uh, the Galapagos Islands off of Argentina. And also when he wrote his book, a lot of people don't know that Darwin's book is not called just Origin of Species. It goes on, and the title, it makes it very clear, and some people, they don't want to realize that, that he said that the darker-skinned people are still evolving. They're not as far evolved as the white-skinned people. And that's what uh, Hitler, he wasn't. He had dark hair, and but the thing is, he was going to have the super race, and he was breeding people and getting them where they would be all white hair and so on and because he believed darwin you see we believe just the opposite we believe that god created the colors he uh, melanin in our body to make us the different colors that he loves colors of variety if you look at the flowers what would it be like if all the flowers are either black or white they're not god made us see the world says oh if you stay in a hot place long enough Everybody's skin will turn brown. That is just hooey. Even in high school biology, uh, when I was subbing there, sometimes I would teach uh, some biology, and they uh, they know that it's genetics and that it came. And we are, as Paul said, one race. We come from Adam and Eve, and we come from Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And genetically, we're all one. It doesn't matter if we have different kind of hair or color hair or skin or whatever traits. We're still of one family, the human family. And so this is something that the Jews did not like either. They did not like the Gentiles because they weren't Jews. God never intended for that to be so. When he was, you remember he stopped at the lady at the well, Samaritan. First of all, they didn't talk to women, which that is wrong too. The second thing, they didn't uh, believe Samaritans could even be saved. And Jesus sent a letter to the Lord and thousands of others received the Lord through her ministry. After that, a woman, the Lord used. <laughs> I'm gonna harp on that in these days because I will tell you the church has, there's a sleeping giant. The church has not, used and seen as important and that is the women's ministries the women missionaries the women that are sharing the gospel with people and you don't have to sister you don't have to be a pastor in order to do this a uh, pastor and the bible says should be the husband of one wife but uh, it doesn't say that you can't speak and share the good news. In fact, Philip had four uh, virgin daughters who were evangelists, okay? And so you need to realize that you can be used mightily of the Lord. Don't hold back. Give him your whole life, sister. Live for him your whole life. Win many to the Lord. And if that were to happen all over the world, and we would love each other in the church the way God intended, the world would see the truth of the gospel and want to receive Christ as their Savior. All right, and we're going to close right now in prayer. And I'm just going to pray to that end. Father, I just come to you now in Jesus' name alone. And I pray for those who are not saved that are hearing this message. You'll draw them to yourself. And we'll give our last breath to sharing the good news with people. And Father, I pray for the women and the churches women that are being saved now even through esther's ministry and elizabeth's ministry gabriel's ministry brother emmanuel's ministry and others oh god help the sleeping giant to awake and help all the women in the church to realize god has filled them and filling them for a ministry beyond their wildest imagination Thank you for the bits of a revival that are taking place here in the United States. May it just spread. And Father, even in the movie halls tonight, many are going from the Calvary chapels and others to see how the Jesus people movement was a revival. And that's how Calvary Chapel got started. 
and many people will be saved as a result of that. And Lord, also, that we in Calvary Chapel, as Christians, or wherever, whichever church you're in, that will be used mightily of you in these last days to win many souls to you, Father. I pray all these things in Jesus' name. Everybody who loves Jesus says, Amen. All right, the Lord bless you guys, and we'll see you, God willing, tomorrow.